Hello, welcome to another session in the uh, digital slide review and sign out series. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences campus. Our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and Path Presenter. We hope that you enjoy it and find it educational. Our case today comes from the realm of GI surgical pathology uh, and involves a uh, <clears throat> middle-aged woman who was uh, uh, undergoing an MRI scan for an unrelated reason uh, when she was discovered to have a rectal mass. And not only did she have a rectal mass, but it appeared as though she had some positive lymph nodes as well. So this sparks a couple of thoughts uh, about uh, how this uh, kind of staging happens um, and what we do uh, that may make a difference uh, with regard to that kind of staging. So uh, there are a couple of ways that radiologists uh, and clinicians use to evaluate rectal cancers or suspected rest rectal cancers. And these can include things like endoscopic ultrasound, CT scanning, uh, magnetic resonance imaging, and even uh, <clears throat> PET scanning as well, or merged PET CT scanning. Now, in the case of the MRI, since it has very good soft tissue delineation, especially in fatty planes where lymph nodes typically live, uh, it is the preferred modality in most respects. Um, and the cutoff criteria are essentially any lymph node bigger than five millimeters is considered a positive lymph node. Now, any surgical pathologist will tell you that not every lymph node that's uh, greater than five millimeters is positive, and not every lymph node that's smaller than five millimeters is negative. And this, of course, then puts us in the category of uh, wondering about uh, the false negative and false positive rates. Uh, in fact, uh, this is an important decision because uh, treatment uh, can uh, vary considerably based on whether or not the patient is a uh, <clears throat> stage one or two or uh, a potentially more or less uh, curable stage, stage three. Now, in surgical pathology, of course, we do biopsies of these kinds of lesions, and this is one such lesion that was uh, biopsied. Um, and so, as you can see here, there's not a great suspicion that this is cancer, uh, but the la mass lesion was somewhat exophytic and there was some cl clinical concern that potentially uh, this was not uh, representative of the full lesion. Looking at this uh, lesion, and it would be certainly easy to uh, overlook this as uh, potentially being something more serious, uh, but we see that uh, we've sort of lost a, a geographical landmark here. So the uh, muscularis mucosa is uh, no longer present here. And instead, we have this somewhat wavy and spindle cell pro proliferation here, uh, which sort of merges with the lamina propria, which is uh, maybe a little bit hyperplastic in areas. And uh, of note, we see that there is a significant eosinophil uh, population uh, had mixed with this. So I'm not sure that uh, most people would be able to give a specific diagnosis based on this uh, material alone, uh, other than to say that it's benign, that there's an inflammatory and spindle cell proliferation. It doesn't look particularly like a GI stromal tumor or other more common lesions. Uh, and so a, uh, a limited resection was attempted uh, in this case. And as you can see, uh, we've got a somewhat lobulated uh, lesion. Uh, we've got uh, areas of ulceration and inflammatory response, maybe a little ulcer debris here, some lymphoid islands, and uh, we have uh, the uh, inflammatory, or excuse me, the hyperplastic uh, surface epithelial response in the uh, colorectal mucosa. However, looking here, we can see that there's a mixture of vessels, some with a little bit of sort of uh, uh, onion skin type of change around them, which you can see here and here. Uh, and in between, in addition to the lymphocytes, which we saw at low magnification, there's a very dense infiltrate of uh, eosinophils. Um, in addition, we might uh, note that uh, there's uh, somewhat of a uh, granulation tissue type response up here superficially where the ulceration has occurred. Um, and we have this uh, very loose um, 
somewhat uh, ectatic vascular process, a little bit of edema and so forth uh, that fits very well with an inflammatory fibroid polyp. So um, given that information, um, this is part of the problem with the size criteria for uh, staging rectal cancers. Only half to three quarters of the cases are detected and only half to three quarters of the cases that are detected really are cancer. So you don't want to miss the opportunity for neoadjuvant and potentially curative therapy when it can help. And at the same time, you don't want to overtreat somebody with radiation chemotherapy when they don't need it. So uh, having a sensitivity and an awareness of an uncommon lesion, uh, or excuse me, a, 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 a not uncommon lesion, but an uncommon location for such a lesion uh, is certainly uh, uh, important to do. So inflammatory fibroid polyps are most commonly seen further proximally in the stomach, the small, small intestine, but they really can occur in just about any GI location from the um, the esophagus on down to the rectum. Uh, these are usually middle-aged adults, and there's a slight female predominance, especially around the time of menopause, which suggests there may be some association with hormone levels and so forth. Interestingly, uh, it's been noted recently that these have some level of overexpression or potentially even mutation in platelet-derived growth factors. Um, and uh, that can be seen on immunohistochemistry. Uh, uh, even when there's not a mutation present. Uh, so what that exactly means, whether this is part of the response, uh, is uncertain. This lesion is centered in the submucosa. It has ectatic vessels with this eosinophilic infiltrate and the kind of onion skin uh, changes I noted around some of the vessels. Um, this is a completely benign lesion, however, even if there is a mutation present. And so no follow-up is needed. Uh, the peripheral eosinophilia, eosinophilia, which you might wonder about in a lesion that has so many uh, stromal eosinophils, is not detected. Uh, and of course, the differential diagnosis beyond the clinical differential for uh, colorectal cancers or gastric cancers or whatever uh, includes a variety of things like GI stromal tumor, inflammatory my myofibroblastic tumor, and a variety of other uh, less frequently uh, detected lesions as well. So just to illustrate uh, a couple of other examples, here's an example from the stomach. Uh, as you can see here, we have normal gastric mucosa overlying. Um, and then we have this stromal process with a number of ectatic vessels, which you can see here, variable sizes. Um, and again, a mixture of inflammatory cells and these uh, stromal cells and a delicate uh, vascular uh, response with uh, areas of ectasia, as you see here. Now, in this particular case, we don't see that prominent onion skinning that we saw in other cases, which, uh, of course, is not obligatory. Um, sometimes you can use special stains to demonstrate that this is not uh, uh, smooth muscle, for example. Uh, this example shows a nice trichrome stain demonstrating the very collagenous nature of these uh, uh, lesions. Uh, and this one somewhat more matured in the sense that the number of inflammatory cells is uh, diminished. Um, in addition, if you have a resection sample, uh, here you can again see uh, a gastric uh, mucosa with one of these lesions. You'll see where it's centered in the submucosa. Uh, it's not involving the uh, muscularis mucosa, which would be down further deep, uh, or excuse me, muscularis uh, propria. Uh, but you can see here again how it has this tendency to uh, obliterate uh, or mask completely any evidence of the uh, muscularis mucosa. So this may be a useful and helpful sign if you fail to see this presence of any evidence of muscularis mucosa. Uh, give inflammatory fibroid polyp a, a consideration and see if you can see the characteristic eosinophils and other uh, changes. Uh, that may be a little clue more evident or more likely to be seen on our superficial biopsies, such as the rectal biopsy that I showed you at the very beginning. So that brings us to the conclusion of this case. Diagnosis and sign out was inflammatory fibroid polyp of the rectum. 
and the patient should do very well and certainly would be pleased with that diagnosis over the uh, radiologist's rendered diagnosis of a uh, advanced stage uh, colorectal tumor. So until next time, I appreciate you joining me. And uh, if you like this, please hit the like and uh, share it with your friends. And we also love to have you join our subscription list for our channel so that you'll be sure to catch uh, new releases as they uh, become available, which we try to do regularly. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.